Hi there, I'm Shan, and today we're going to continue playing Gym Daddy. This is an, a really fun game, and I was actually surprised because I wasn't sure if I was going to like the simulation type dating games. So, last we left off, we had the barbecue at the cul de sac, and we met all the different neighbors. And now we just got home and we got to decide on what we want to, what I'm going to do while Amanda goes out. Hopefully, she's being safe. <laughs> I think I'll like work on some stuff. I don't know it. all the things from so. You know, that stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roast rack of rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at the cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutrition and substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I walk under the kitchen and I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon, unless she's driving home now. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely tell her better than to te text and drive. I reach into the free freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passed, now I'm really worried that the episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exasperating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who is she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' numbers? Why, do I, why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is MP? I had to send, to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know when you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh, <sighs> oh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't she answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. <laughs> oh, oops, guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda and... Hmm? Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home half an hour late after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to like this when I got to school, where are you? I have a right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. <laughs> well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that uh -huh. again. Oh. All right, I'm going to bed now. Uh oh. Amanda closes the door to the room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna like. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peaceful offering. Uh. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, uh. I thought about what you said last night. Huh? I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do that again. Well, I'm sorry for freaking out. You're in the out now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Mm. Team Fang? Team Fang. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. I already did. Bless you. <laughs> and I scarf down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's that book? Aww. It's a social media platform. Wait, huh? what? What's a social media platform? <laughs> Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile of my own. Mm. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Aww. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my dad profile on dad book, which as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Dad. All right, Pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On the Friday night, you were mostly likely to... Let's not watch the... If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. 
Let's do that. Why are you gonna try? Turn on. Got those gains. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? I want to be a good father. Uh, I've always wanted to be like a good father. I wanted to be there for the kid and everything. What's your favorite movie genre? I'll go romantic comedies. What's your ideal date? Okay, I'm gonna do arts. Let's go set some places on fire. <laughs> what do you never leave home without? My crippling slow self-esteem. I spend a lot of time thinking about... Honestly, I think about like how the world's gonna end and stuff like that and like stuff like that. So, yay! See? That wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You said mesh is one of them. Or more than one, any of more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. I'll go get him, Dad. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Woo! All right. Who do I talk to? I'll talk to Hugo, middle school teacher, high school teacher. Writers of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son will put a cherry bomb in your trash can, I know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> on a Saturday night, you'll most likely brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A remembrance of things past by Marshall Boast. What are your turn on muscles? What did you want to be when you grew up? Movie star. Alright. Oh, okay. So I can get up to three stars with them and everything. What's your favorite movie genre? Documentaries. On art history. What's your ideal day? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch in comfortable silence. What do you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forgot them at home a lot. I spent a lot of time thinking about... I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them themselves. So, let's go message. I navigate to Hugo's dad book and type out a message. Oh, cool. Oh, never mind. Hey, Hugo. Great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? I wait for me before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. <laughs> I'm so glad you messaged me. I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask you. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. Uh, I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be honest with you here. It's a middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about from what, man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accounted for in their middle school, arguably the worst age to be. Oh, it's like Amanda silently trudges in the kitchen and pours herself a blow, 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 a cereal, blow a cereal, yep. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, are you alright? I'm oh. fine. Of course, I'm fine. <laughs> I just got to thinking about the Backstreet Boys. They had a reunion. The Backstreet Boys are about right, right? Huh. But they're different. Huh. Something's wrong with them. Like, they're a dream someone once had but can no longer remember. And no one's talking about it. They just go on like everything's normal. Are they sure that's all you're upset about? Is there, you know, anything going on? I just want to know that I'm here for you and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder crying or a strong dad to go kick someone. But, but only a phone call away. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced. But I'll stop bad badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Hey, how was middle school for you? Ugh. Bad. But nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being genuinely terrible. Ugh. I hear ya. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day, top 40s pop. Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Mm -hmm. What was your middle school experience like? Well, my middle school experience was terrible. I won't get into that. Um, I didn't like it. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Strugs, you hurt me and I'll never forget mm -hmm. it. What did she do to you? I stare off into Mill's distance. Remembering the 24 hours that we dated <laughs> and the three times we held hands between class periods. And then I remember the bitter betrayal. Her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham. Him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. Huh. See, middle schoolers are reprehensive. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. Just wanted to know what I was in for. Mm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. The last field trip I got to go on was the Clam Chowder Factory. They didn't even give us Clam Chowder. They gave us square pizza at a Clam Chowder Factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat Clam Chowder anymore? <laughs> no, it's because Bobby Bellingham threw up in one of the vats of Clam Chowder, so I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right. Let's leave that story firmly in the past. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with the cool fish. Man, I'm kinda weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What? Are you worried that a whale is gonna pop up out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put that fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Yes. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of ocean. I sit back down on the computer and let Hugh know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss the man on the forehead before I head out. Alright, to the aquarium! I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Pre-teens huddle around their teachers in small groups yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher lo looks like they're at their wit's end. Uh. Hugo jogs up to me looking for household. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! Eh. It's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, it's you and me, Chaperone, and a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Hugo walks over to a gaggle of preteens who all, all sit on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Um... Can you just put down your phones? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. Then they go back to their texting. <laughs> at least they're quiet. Um... Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food struck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's a middle school after all. Oh. We'll see. The classes start filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive stapled packets of paper to each other. These are due at the end of the field trip, yes. This will be for the grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the cheese from Hugo. What's in the packet? Mm. Honestly, it's just busy work so that teachers can have a moment moment surprise. I think one of the questions asked them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher Hex. I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did you on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile pre preservance, pre preservance, pre pers perseverance of human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Ah. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I walk over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Hey! That right there is a lime fish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa! Hey! Their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore, man. Ah! You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over there. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy looking fish who hangs out near the bottom of the oh. tank. That's a stonefish. The most venomous fish in the world. And they just like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, so as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh. Tissue necrosis? Cool. Ah. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over oh. there? That one? Yeah, that's the American longfin? Oh. Yeah? Did you know that? Political fish trivia. This fish suddenly open. This fish openly supports the legal legalization of marijuana. I didn't know it was so progressive. Time's to change it, man. Oh. Wait, are you serious? Serious is a heart attack. We're talking fish here. There's no time for mm -hmm. jokes. That's a clownfish. Oh my goodness gracious! Right, we did the kids in the room. <laughs> it's a clownfish. Oh, I did not do that good. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around that massive floor in the ceiling aquarium. The kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. He will use my side to separate two kids who start fighting over a Capri, Capri Sun. I will walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs of a different fish swimming inside of the closure. After a while, I look around and see Hugh again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face for someone surrounded by angry hormone preteen genes. He looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Oh. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. We can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. Are these two first kissing? We, could, uh, we can learn the... Yeah. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It is truly fascinating to be able to observe it in a settling manner as this. That's a very astute point, Shen. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. Hey, successful. We eventually make our way to the touch, touch, touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. 
The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moistured hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, Shen? <laughs> I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Go on, it'll be fun and informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any other things are, but I get a feeling they'll probably bite me in, in my delicious hands if given a chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. They're stingrays. They had their barbs removed. The horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are pretty safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dip my hand in the cold water. I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back in the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some sea urchins and feel the hard car carapace of a horse horseshoe crab. My hand brush against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away blushing. Oh! Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away sometimes. Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. What is that? Hmm? Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Susan, Susan, get back here. Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell you what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell you what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I'll go over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. That's an easy 510 in the clank. I had a bug go down for that once. He came out of the change, man. Say hey, Mr. Bars. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo from before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Whoa! Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab flankingly scuttles out across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan! What was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? The outside? Where, where he was going to die? Uh, Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and hands where we can see them. <laughs> Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the soldier. Mm -hmm. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I thought that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks, sea turns, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surround us. Oh, Look over here. Hugo points, so some seahorses gather at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle giving birth. Oh, oh my god. That's actually the male seahorse. <clears throat> so it takes the fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur follows the students. They just jump back on their phones. Hey. Fun fact, male sea seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. Hmm. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids. Awkward teenage years too. All whoever, many thousands of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Oh. That's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as I possibly can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave high school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about these things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever stop. I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to the fav to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Ah. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes! <laughs> Yay, we get to see the penguins! Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on their glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few months, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Whoa. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, just kidding. It's very bad. Is it one of ours? Eh. It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind the rock. She's high and just out of the sight of one of the police. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit is ajar. Unlocked this whole time. We gotta stop her before the staff sees and bar bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. <sighs> I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and exhausts the entire oh, no. room. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Uh, um, 
Here's the facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at you and confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey, the girl upside down, look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl hmm. still laughs at me. Contrary to possible popular police, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somewhat enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even gonna go? They're gonna live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. <sighs> Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh. With some exceptions, so they don't all live in cold climates, if you're splitting hair here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. I'll give you $20 right now if you leave with me. All things for a second. Okay, we'll give it, well, give it to me right now. I reach my pocket and everything. Same HBO. Okay, well, I have a 12 and some pain. Here's a button here, that's enough. Pay me another 8 later, we have a deal. We move the shakeout and agree before sunrise there's a wave of penguins on our way of exposure. We're gonna have to block these birds. <laughs> what? What the fuck is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> ah! Penguins, what the fuck? How did you get out? Get out of the place! What? Are you going? My God, I had to. Oh. One penguin escaped. Oh, jeez. I hope that doesn't come back. Whew, glad it's over. Just an item to. Looks like Hugo's wrapping up his diversion, diversionary penguin speech, mm. and that's why I think that penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the room and goes over. <sighs> Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin in your hands. Well, uh, it was a thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight Whoa. bucks. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly <laughs> runs off towards Susan. I suppose that they can prepare animal mm -hmm. females. You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Shen, did you just bribe a child? <laughs> Penguins on the line. Listen, man, we've all done dark things in our life. I'm not the young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe a child to save a penguin. Then the me today knows different. I only wish I could oh. go back. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. <laughs> With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop, and we make our way back out to the buses. Let's leave the aquarium and the kids low onto the buses. Hugo spins his side. Hey, Shan, thank you for so much for helping today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Hey. Let me take you the next time to make up for you. You like cheese boards? I love cheese boards. Great. Well, I gotta make sure the kids don't see anything else. See you around. Oh, that was fun. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Yeah. What's she up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How's the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. <laughs> We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any employees saw. Yeah. You have to go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo though. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become the father. Oh yeah! Day complete! Number one down. Okay. Whoa. A plus. Woo. <laughs> A plus. Yeah. Ah, uh, that could have gone better. While I'm doing my afternoon word drums, I hear that mail truck pull into the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a coupon, a couple of letters in a large envelope. It takes a couple of tries for him to get in. Hey, my coupons. I take a close look at the large leather envelope. Hmm. 
I like the lock on now. Ever so, she probably has her phones in. Amanda, she yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Hi. Immediately, Amber, Amber pushes her to open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. Hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And... The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Mm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! Oh, I got in! Amanda hosts the letter side and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. She pulls me away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Aww. Wait. Dad, I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, a childhood is one of the more expensive schools that I might plan to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for a long time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Right. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. Wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foiled wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a reload to, with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Man, I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yes. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all the galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student to ID. And Manda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just saying, they mentioned that students get their own studio space and their own once they're seniors, and once we, we're all professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites or burritos. I thought I'd tell her she was her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and then it match you with someone who has similar major interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend, but don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent the semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. Yeah. Oh. They like to have animals in their rooms if you got a note saying they needed one? I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit though? Oh boy, I think I'll leave it up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So you know, I had that talk with mm. Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? Mm. No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need to knock a knock out park one of these last few months of school. Okay, I really want to go to Holmes. We need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Uh. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a fort? 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays. There's gonna be some treacherous icy roads and cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Aww. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's <laughs> happening. Dad, I can't get tears in my burritos. It's gonna make it taste sad. Pull a mad name for her and hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Welcome. Mm. You've got dads. Hey. Okay. Well, this has been a little longer episode, and I think I'm gonna end it here. But it's been really fun. We got to go to an aquarium. We got to fight off some penguins, and Amanda got into HIA. So that's really good. And it's been a good, and we also went on a date with Hugo, which I got an A plus on, so I'm very happy about that. I did make a few mistakes, but hope that that came a little better. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see more, hit that like button, and as always, I'll see you.